usual regular lane startup. It was nice in the top. It was aggressive in the bottom. The junglers were just looking for a place to gank. And then all of a sudden, as we expected in the first game, you know, it, as a transport into the second game, KW, you took a little control in the early game with a single couple kills, but not capitalizing on that dragon early on, leaving that dragon left alone. And then here comes a here comes a Perry's uprising. Just itching for a fight, not gonna give up the second game, gonna make a huge standoff. And capturing the dragon, getting a huge amount of kills in the early game, and just completely taking control of the objectives, of the rotations, of everything. And they did what we knew they were capable of in making this even fight something that heavily went in their favor. And they came back swinging. They were down kills. They were down by like five, seven K gold. And they made a huge comeback. Oh, it was just, it was beautiful gameplay. It was something you had to be there to watch. Which you can watch the VOD later on. Yeah, you can totally watch the VOD later on. We are getting these guys into the Rift. Um, again, you know, uh, before we started this entire game, you know, we did a poll. Who you thought was going to win this entire thing? 75% of you said KWU Esports was going to take this. Game one, I would have agreed with you. Going into game two, I also would have agreed with you. But somewhere along the lines... Uh, Arius Uprising, through some amazing shot calling, got Vayne absolutely huge, sent Kuhn into the late game, getting sated, knocking down turrets like it was something cool to do, and taking game two. Now here we are, game three, it's anybody's game. The bragging rights are are through the roof right now. The, the fame, the attention, who's going to win a game three on Rumble on the Rift is just... It's massive. The, it, it's massive. <laughs> it is massive. We've ne never had a best of three go to game three. This is the first time, and all of you are here to witness it, along with Ever and I. So good. What a monumental. What a monumental occasion. Two great teams giving us great League of Legends gameplay. Extremely fun to watch, extremely fun to cast, extremely fun to enjoy and soak it all in. Some great quality league. Yeah. Ah! I mean, it is really good. I am super, super anxious to see these teams and what they pick. Like, I am so astounded by the bands. Like, I can only imagine. I just, I'm a coach. Uh, you know, if you're a coach, Pinguino, what do you tell? I, I don't even know. I, I'm gonna. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna role play here for a second. You're gonna be Arius Uprise's coach, and I'm gonna be KWU esports coach okay tell me what you're gonna tell them to ban just let me let me in your brain what are you gonna say what they should ban is the zillion for god's sakes ban that zillion i underestimated that pick um <clears throat> i would also get rid of the quinn don't want that in there and probably I would still go for the Udyr ban. So I would still go for the yeah. Udyr, input the Zillion ban, take away the Quinn ban, ban also because just getting that vein, if you can get that vein early, if you can get the vein on your team and ban Allen on their team and make them do something that they're not completely comfortable, and that bottom line is key, especially since all the kiting and all of the damage being dealt. And if you can play the game as safely but as effectively as you did the last game, that's all you need to do in bot lane, and then just wait for the mid to late game, and then carry your team to victory. Get uh, rid of the zillion. Yeah, nope, for yeah. Real. So, so if I'm, so if I'm, uh, if I'm, if I'm KWE Esports, I'm telling my guys, look, we're gonna have to focus that bottom lane. We're gonna have to shut that lane down. We cannot allow Fake to play that uh, that vein again. Like he is very proficient. He carried that very, very hard. Um, I'm definitely shutting down a tanky top laner because I'm going to take a tanky top laner myself. So I'm shutting I'm shutting down a pick like Malphite, something that's going to engage. If I'm not going to play Nautilus, I'm shutting down Nautilus. I'm not going to give 360 no scope the ability to get on a tanky initiate. I'm going to force them onto something, um, something not comfortable. Um, seeing somebody able to make plays on Azir or Lissandra... Um, I'm I'm actually still comfortable uh, uh, taking them 
off of the Lissandra or uh, off of the Lissandra pick. The Emperor's Divide is a little bit more shaky and not so reliable. So I'm taking the Azir away, and, and that's kind of where I'm leading our guys to victory. Um, I'm going to try to get a split push champion real strong. Maybe I'm going to try to put uh, X Bang Bang Pal on a Lee Sin or an Elise. Something that's going to make a ton of damage um, and make them fear going into their jungle. Um, that being said, these two teams are ready to hash it out. They're ready to get on the rift. They're ready to see who takes game three um and 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 brings home all the bacon so without further ado um we are ready to get on this thing we are ready to get on this thing last time last time chat we want to hear from you um who do you think is gonna win uh is it going to be that kwu esports win Kansas Westland University Esports. Are they going to take this home? Or are we going to see, like uh, 360 No Scope talked about earlier on in the interview, are we going to see that that teamwork from Arius Uprising shut this KWU team down? They proved it last game that team <laughs> fighting was the way that they were going to take this. So I'd like to see what happens um, in picks and bands. I'd like to see what happens. There's that vein pick getting banned immediately on fake, not wanting to take any chances. If I'm Arius Uprising... Ooh, they use a ban on the Janna. Ban that zillion! Ban it! What are we doing? Ah, oh, it does look like we lose Alex. Having a little bit of... Uh... Nope. No, I cannot see you. I cannot... Yeah, uh, I, did, I did that to better my connection. Ah, I see. All right, so... Is it working, <laughs> Can you hear me, chat? Without I think, the robot voice. I think chat can hear you. Okay. I think chat can hear you. Um, we do have official dreams, fake for MVP. I 110% agree that uh, fake in the last game was absolutely the MVP on that huge vein. Um, definitely, definitely think so. All right, so we're, again, not going to see... The zillion pickup, our uh, the zillion band. It's completely left open for KW. That astounds me. Yeah, KW uh, draws is going to be able to get on that again. The only difference is is they are uh, KWU is completely taking away the pressure off of their bottom lane by banning out all of Fake's very comfort pick champions. Like those are absolutely banned out. So they're trying to make him a non-factor in this game. And if they are able to get on something like an Ezreal um, or even maybe even a, a, a Corky that's going to get into mid game, then they can absolutely shake, shut fake and good down in the mid game and just end it. X Bang Pal is hovering that Shaco because the chat has been craving it. They've, they've won it. They want it. Yeah, for what you want, chat, you just might get it. You just might get it. The Jace. We're going to see a Jace in this game. They are hovering it. They're also hovering the Shaco pick. They've got 30 seconds to think about it. Uh, OG Coon is going to pick up the bear. Yeah, there's Ooh. Drells. There's Drells picking up the Zillion. Not only does Zillion hate bears, but Drells is fantastic on this Zillion pick. I mean, it's huge. Oh, it's no. Here comes the Udir. They forgot to ban the Udir. Here they forgot comes. to ban the Udir. I mean, this is putting KWU in the driver's seat. They've got all the engage, all the stun they need. X Bang, you know, we talked about Drells a lot in that first game about carrying the team on their back, Pinguino. We talked about it. We did. But yeah, you but mentioned. AU is not taking. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned. Go ahead. Huh. AU's not taking chances, though. They do have the, the volley and the Garen, so they want a better full end in their first game comp uh, as opposed to the when they win against this very same comp we're seeing from KWU. But again, that like you've been saying, that, that Drails is super-duper spooky. So is that Udyr pick. I mean, X-Bang played 
a remarkable Udir. He knew exactly when to split push. He knew exactly when to maneuver around the map. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, it's derails. Dra not drails. So we've been messing up this entire time. It's derails. We've been doing him so wrong. That's all right. We've still... Hey, he knows who we're talking about. And the fact that we're praising him. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Derails. Yeah. Some beanie got that LeBlanc, so an aggressive. A very aggressive, mid yeah, mid lane. Very aggressive mid lane. 360 no scope. I, I can pretty much guarantee that that Garen is going on. How tanky are we going to see this front line? Um, good might be able to pick up safely this Nautilus. I mean, uh, Master Kenobi already safely on his engaged champion. This, <coughs> I gotta say, I love this KWU um, esports composition. Everything mm. except for Area's Jinx, because Area's Jinx was not exceptionally impressive the first game, even when they won. Um, it's not bad. It wasn't bad, but uh, he wasn't topping out the damage charts, and he wasn't doing a ton on it. I actually preferred him on Sivir. I, I mean, that's just me. I thought he played a very, very good Sivir game. Um, I just don't think that they were able to uh, do the team fighting that they needed to do. But I think, I, I again think that the um, the Sivir might have been even a better pickup here. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Jinx is a much a very, very late game team composition. Um, yeah. The hyper carry Jinx is definitely a spooky thought, and especially against this this Ezreal. Ezreal, however, is scary itself, but not as terrifying as a Jinx. You have the stuns, you have the slow, and you have that insane burst of speed and damage. It's just crazy to go against. Yeah, I mean, it's really going to be very scary. Um, it's very terrifying. I'm just... I, I'm really concerned now for Arius Uprising with this team composition that KWU has gotten. You know, you kind of see the chat. Um, uh, yeah. Um, just, you see the uh, chat just talking about just the, the KWU's team composition and everybody just feeling very, very, very good about this. Um, Official Dreams KWU won AOU gave it away during ban. I absolutely, I kind of really, really, um, I really agree on this. Yeah, AOE saying, I definitely, definitely think that KWU is going to win this one. Um, just feeling very, very strong. Yeah. Um, and, like, I know Jinx isn't a, uh, a normally picked one in this new meta, and she hasn't been picked too often, but that doesn't take away from her from her her lethality run estimate a jinx just because she's not in the top 10 or top like right now jinx is 11 on top adc's pick probably right and you're probably right on that fact but yeah jinx jinx's kit and her character is still such a deadly deadly foe to fit go especially if you're on a chant on a on a person who knows how to play that champion very well and can have really good support as we've seen the mighty Dern. Was bound back actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Almighty Dern, uh, back in for Electric Buzz, who was uh, uh, sub uh, subbed in for Almighty Dern, and that last one, I guess they didn't like quite how that synergy was working in the bottom lane because they have made that swap back. And I'm curious to see if it uh, makes a difference because this is essentially the exact same composition in the bottom with the jungle that we saw in Game One. That was very very effective. Mm hmm. So as we get start. into this, yeah, as we get into this, guys, let us know. This is game three, last game of the night. This is a best of three between Kansas Wesleyan University um, and Arius Uprising. Um, again, derails, completely derailing the competition um, for that first game. The uh, second game, definitely D7 fake just just obliterating it and then uh uh og coon getting very very our oc coon getting very very big 
but uh, X Bang Bang Pal in the first game was able to split push the boys over at KWU to esports to victory. So we're very very excited. We have five seconds left before we get into loading screen and get into this next rumble on the rift so you guys let me know what you think who's going to take this thing down who is going to win is this going to be a victory for the boys over at kwu if you think so type in in chat hashtag kwu win if you think the boys over at Arius Uprising are going to take the whole enchilada and go home with the W in their second rumble on the rift then in chat hashtag AU win let me know guys what you think I'm very interested to hear your opinions on this I really want to know who you guys think is going to win Pinguino who do you think is going to win I did like the second game AU mentality the comp everything was beautiful shot calling was amazing but shot calling alone is not going to win you a game right um i do think they made a huge mistake in not banning the zillion and the udi are out um i do think those two are going to come back to bite him in the butt and i feel that kwu has so much comfortable and synergy has so much comfort and synergy in this comp that they're gonna take it in this game, uh, but I I have seen and I know that Area Uprising can and will surprise you, so sure. I'm going to lean towards KWU in this game, with a hopeful stub, on AU. So as we're getting into this, um, uh, actually we're <laughs> getting into it right now. I hear the sounds of Summoner's Rift in my ear here. Going to get right into this thing. And into the rift we go, my friends. Into the rift we go, indeed. Um, just kind of taking a second to get in here. There we are. Very excited. So a lot of uh, a lot of people saying KWU win in here. I just think that everybody is pretty comfortable with the fact that um, that uh, they won during the draft phase. I think we're thinking that they won during the draft phase as well. Uh, Three sixty no scope does DC. So we're looking for a pause here. Oh, maybe not. Looks like he's back in the game. The boys over at KWU, again, looking for this invade. They just might be able to pull it off this time because boys over at Arius Uprising are not as cautious as they were before. Maybe thrown off by the lack of uh, knowing if they're top laner because the boys oh are... Oh, my, my goodness. God. There is the binding. And oh. does look like good. Going to go... Oh, he almost goes down. But that Nautilus is very tanky. But one thing is for sure, they do blow the flash. <coughs> so small victory by KWU, but that is a flash blown. So very good job by KWU Esports to get in that jungle. They got so close. Oh. Scary close. So, so close. AOU. Our AOE, that synergy, AU with the fire bear. Love it. I love it. Absolutely. So huge. I cannot wait to see who wins this one. Both these teams' guts and glory. It's everything. Fake has taken a little too much damage here, in my opinion. Does proc that Thunder Lords on the last. Last hit, doing some amount of damage, pretty good amount. Standard lanes, definitely going to be respecting each other um, all throughout this game. Nobody's going to be going too hard, everybody's going to be playing very, very reserved. Oof. Areas, so though. going three rails. See if the Zillion can save him. Ooh. Zillion does pop some baddies. Um, 
passive there. He's gonna have to swag walk it out in mid lane. I'm anxious to see, you know, we haven't been paying too much attention between some Betty and D rails, but um, gonna try to pay a little bit more attention to this lane, see what happens, because it all starts depending on what D rails is starting to do here in the mid lane. We have um, him so pegged on this champion that it's very scary, but we are missing a lot of action down here in the bot side. It does look like uh, Dern, our almighty oh Dern, taking a ton of damage by Fake. And you don't want Fake to get too big. Like he proved last game, if you give him too much birth, then I mean, he is going to tear you up. And here we have him taking a lot of damage. Ariel's getting off a few pops. Trading back and forth. Derails taking some huge damage from some beady. Some beady getting hit with the time grenade as the spin to win Garen. Keeps hitting Master Kenobi. This is going to be a hard lane for Master Kenobi, especially with his Garen. He has a lot of damage and a lot of health as a tank with Garen. Yeah, I mean, Garen is just kind of difficult to deal with if you have a, if you have a uh, champion that's or a guy that's pretty proficient with him. Mm. Um, he can be very annoying. And the longer he gets to beef up and, and just kind of get naturally tanky, just kind of the more of a problem becomes. What counter is a Garen? A Darius or another Garen. That's right. I'm sa I'm pretty sure I'm safe to say um correct me if I'm wrong chat and maybe maybe this has nothing to do with lore but maybe it has everything to do with lore Garen is not countered by any champions um that are, that originate from Demacia Oh first blood goes down to the Jinx and you don't want her to snowball at all No that's bad. It's mucho no bueno. First blood does go over to Jinx, so very nice areas. Funny enough, um, the first bloods have been all over this map. Uh, the first first blood, of course, went over to derails on that zillion pickup. Second uh, first blood went to the bottom side, which was actually Faker. And now here, Arias is going to collect the first blood in game three for uh, KWU. So, and the first blood wars, KWU is the victor. If it was just about first bloods, got it. AoE is Fiora Demacian? Is she Demacian? Does I she... believe she's French. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that she was from Demacia. I did not think that she was from Demacia. I thought she was like from Piltover or something. Oh, as I'm saying that, Derail is taking a ton of damage from some Betty. And maybe this is why we continued to see the uh, ban out on that LeBlanc pickup. Because um, somebody is so proficient on it. Here's a spin to win on a Master Kenobi. 360 no scope is winning in a very slight CS advantage. 34 to 29. The Jedi Master takes a minute, hops back to uh, to ward that bush so, he's, so he can push up pretty far and not be scared of Coon. Ari is taking a lot of damage, but he seems to not care even in the slightest. As he, as he's, uh, he's actually climbing. Uh, he's right on Fake's coattails with the CS. So 49 to 50. I mean, he's right there. But plus the gold, or plus the gold from the kill, he has already been able to go back and buy his BF sword. So, uh, Ezreal, a long way from home on being able to complete the items that are gonna justify that oh pick. bang bang pow aggressively going into kun kun's jungle saying hey this is mine you wouldn't take it well there's just no scope master kenobi with 360 oh, no scope oh, and kun are in tow 
some Betty now able to get the chains. There is a flip by Kuhn, and Kenobi is going to be the first casualty over to Arius Uprising. Oh no! D Rays! Oh! I missed it! Here comes the TP! Miss 360 no scope! Almighty oh, Dern taking some huge damage oh. down to the 360 no scope! G Rails seeing what can I do? I can't do anything, so run away, will you? As the volley bear always oh, see TP from the Malphite going up top against the Malphite. And just like that, Arius Uprising in the lead here. One to three. Um, almost, well, not quite up a uh, thousand K gold, but we're, we're, we're inching up there. But this is definitely a different Arius Uprising than we saw in the beginning uh, of the last two games. You know, usually it took about 15 minutes for Arius Uprising to kind of kick in and start um, and start doing what they needed to do. But but here we are seeing an early game aggressive Arius Uprising in the lead. So what do I mean? What do you make of that thing? We know. I mean, do, do, I, we, do we have somebody new here playing or? Uh, I I think the mentality is. We won the last game. Let's not lose this the first game. I feel like they could have won easily the first game. Remember, they had that comeback in the first game. They just weren't able to capitalize or turn it on soon enough. Sure. I feel this is happening earlier in this game, obviously. But because they turned on that switch so early, they have that confidence as momentum. They can win this game, I feel. Although the Udyr and the Zillion mid will begin to scale a little bit sooner now. Depends on how much they do on CS, but... If they keep this control, if they keep this lead, and manage to take down another two turrets, and maybe a dragon. A dragon has been proven to be crucial in these last two games. Whoever gets first dragon tends to determine the tempo of the rest of the game. So if they can get at least two more kills, another tower, and then a dragon, that would be subliminally important to them. So yeah. Arius Uprising, do us proud. We know you got this. Yeah, I mean, very, very exciting. Here we're going to see somebody poised to get a 3v2 on this. He's going to definitely be spotted out by one ward and one pink ward. He's going to get binded up. Um, it doesn't look like we're seeing a followed rotation by D-Rails. Um, and a little CS lost for somebody. Pinging that Mia. D-Rails kind of kind of checking out the jungle see what he spots where'd my mm -hmm. laner go oh my goodness 360 no scope just spinning all over this rock but just can't chip it down such a great game from Arius uprising it really is i mean it's a different game it's a very it's a different, different game. yeah i love it I love it's it. like a different team yeah they band together and they just start the shot calling yep this is a combination. This is good shot calling with good early game with good control of objectives. Great whoever, team one. Yeah, whoever Arius Uprising shot caller is, like I said, the guy needs a hug. Somebody needs to bake him a potato. I mean, the guy's got it going on. Again, uh, being pings all over the map, Coon and somebody are definitely spotted out. The vision is in the lead over here for kwu esports they're definitely seeing all the rotations that arius uprising is making which is a good thing <coughs> um because they're making a lot of them they're making a ton of rotations here we go again more pings out by the boys at arius uprising watching that bear move around that map like we talked about earlier also, uh, Zillion hates bears. He's very racist against bears. He doesn't think bears should be in the League of Legends. He's a bearsist. He's a bearsist. So there's a fantastic binding onto good. He might be in kind of a bad position, but since he's so stinking tanky, um, he's going to be able to survive. You see that depth charge get blocked by that Morgana shield? Very good job mm -hmm. by Almighty Dern. These two noodles Spinning. up here. Yeah. <laughs> Spinning and winning on whatever little health he can get. <laughs> He's going to start to uh, become very relevant, though, later on. This is going to be a, uh, a push down on this bottom lane. But here comes a fantastic binding. 
gets him caught up under the tower. Um, oh no! Unstoppable onslaught gets a four-man knockup. Fake goes down, turns it into a very quick uh, four-on-four, and uh, Aerius Uprising is on the losing end of that exchange. Here we go. Here comes the dragon. Dragon gonna get taken down fairly quickly by KWU Esports. Bang Bang Pow with the turtle fists of steel. 13-23, first dragon down. Now the tempo is gonna start to turn. I, I feel it's gonna start to turn in a little favor of KWU for a, for a good bit because this dragon buff is gonna help with the poking, with the laning, with everything that they do because they're super aggressive. Yeah. You know, uh, it's interesting. In this series so far, KWU has taken every first dragon. Yeah, every first dragon. One dragon to one tower. Ooh, some beady taking those tower shots. Ooh, bang, bang, pow. Oh! Down goes bang, bang, pow. Yeah, wow. this, this, this is definitely the reason for some Betty's. Um, uh, his uh, his ban out for El LeBlanc. You know, we saw it in the first two games, and you and I were both like, "What the hell? Why is why is LB getting banned out?" Well, this is it. He's two, uh, he's two and O on this champion, and he's not uh, he's not really succumbing to derails pressure and aggression uh, from the Zillion pick. It's, it's he's not zoning him out. He's he's dealing with it remarkably well. I'm surprised a pause hasn't come out for Arius Uprising, considering uh, OG Kuhn is DC'd. Mm -hmm. They have three. Figured they would kind of use one here. They definitely should use one. There it is. And here we see okay. the pause. 